Good evening. I'd like to call this meeting of the Durham City Council to order uh, for the meeting of January the 7th, 2019. And first, I want to wish everyone a Happy New Year and say Year. how happy Year's we man. are to have everybody back and to be back. Happy New Year. Um, <clears throat> and we're looking forward to a great year together here in the city of Durham. Certainly want to welcome all of you all here tonight. Uh, and now I'll ask you to please join me for a moment of silent meditation. Thank you. Councilmember Reese, would you like to lead us in the pledge? Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and good evening, everyone. If it's your practice to do so, and if you're able, please rise as we uh, say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Council Member. And now, Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Mayor Shul. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Johnson. Here. Council Member Alston. Here. Councilmember Caballero. Here. Councilmember Freeman. Present. Councilmember Middleton. Here. Councilmember Reese. Here. Thank you very much. And now we're going to proceed with our ceremonial items. Our first item was Parks and Recreation Accreditation Designation. And I'm going to ask Councilmember Reese to join me at the podium, and we will welcome our. He's already gone. Great. And he will welcome our uh, <laughs> guests. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight. This is really exciting. Um, tonight, we're going to read a proclamation honoring uh, our Parks and Recreation Department for their recent accreditation. I just wanted to take a moment to say that back in April, was it, when the, when the folks were here? Um, April sounds right. Back in April of uh, 2018, a number of us had the opportunity to visit with the folks from Parks and Rec and the folks from uh, the commission that does this accreditation, and I was really struck by how impressed they were at our Parks and Recreation Department, um, and this, uh, this recognition is truly well-deserved. This is a proclamation for the Parks and Recreation Accreditation designation. Whereas Parks and Recreation provides fun places to be physically active, enjoy nature, and socialize with friends and neighbors. And whereas Parks and Recreation provides essential environmental <laughs> and aesthetic benefits that make Durham a great place to live, work, and play. And whereas agency accreditation is a quality assurance and quality improvement process, and whereas accreditation through the Commission for Accreditation of Park and Recreation Agencies is a five-year cycle that includes three phases, development of the agency's self-assessment report, 
the on-site visitation, and the Commission's review and decision. And whereas agency accreditation is based on compliance with 151 standards for national accreditation, and whereas a standard is a statement of desirable practice set forth by experienced professionals, and whereas the standards provide an effective and credible means of evaluating a park and recreation agency's overall system, and whereas Durham Parks and Recreation has met all of the national standards of best practice, and whereas there are currently 174 accredited park and recreation agencies in the United States, whereas, and whereas the department, Durham Parks and Recreation is one of 12 accredited agencies in the state of North Carolina, and whereas the city of Durham recognizes the benefits of a nationally accredited park and recreation agency. Therefore, I, Stephen M. Shule, Mayor of the City of Durham, North Carolina, along with the entire City Council, extend to Durham Parks and Recreation our sincere congratulations on achieving national reaccreditation from the Commission for Accreditation of Park and Recreation Agencies, and call upon all cities to rec all citizens to recognize the significance of this event. Witness my hand in the corporate seal of the City of Durham, North Carolina, on this seventh day, January 2019. Okay, thank you all so much. I have to, I'd be remiss if I didn't thank the city manager and our deputy city manager, Bo Ferguson, our city council uh, and DPR employees for all the support to accomplish this. Um, as you saw in the first picture, that was our entire department. I wanna thank also our, we have our, deputy, our assistant directors back here. Joy, raise your hand, Tom Dawson, Jason Jones. And we couldn't have done it without the leadership of Gina Murray, who is our accreditation coordinator. She keeps us on track. <laughs> we are committed to continue striving to be one of the best parks and recreation departments in the nation. And we are, um, will continue the hard work that we've started back in 2008. And I would like to also take this time to introduce Michelle Wells, who is our executive director for North Carolina Recreation Park Association, and Keith Jenkins, who is our president. It is indeed our honor to be here tonight to celebrate with the City of Durham and Parks and Recreation Department this wonderful continuation of their achievement and acknowledgement of how important it is to uh, set forth to be the best of the best. I think if you caught in the proclamation, they achieved 151 of 151 standards. And if we were teachers giving them a grade, that would be an A++ at 100, correct? <laughs> Durham does a great job uh, there, actually. Um, one of the departments, when I get called and people say, we're looking for someone to pilot, with, uh, to partner with, we have a pilot program. Durham's one of those departments that comes to mind. Not only are they um, willing to do it, but they have the skills and the knowledge and enthusiasm to do it. And, and I always hear great things about that. And they are also a great partner with NCRPA for us to offer educational programs and opportunities for fellow professionals, not only in the region, but across the state. So. Um, we are delighted to be here tonight to celebrate with you. Thanks, Michelle. Uh, my name is Keith Jenkins, president for the North Carolina Recreation and Park Association. It's an absolute pleasure to be here this evening. Uh, I'd like to ask that Mayor Shule uh, is joining us and also uh, Mr. Bonfield, if you could join us, please. If there are um, any other Parks and Recreation staff or members of the Recreation Advisory Commission uh, in the audience tonight, if you'd please stand. We know this took the support of each and every one of you. I can certainly say, as a member of the town of Cary, we're, we're one of the accredited agencies, and I serve on that uh, panel as well, the work that these individuals have to put in to meet those 151 standards is outstanding. Uh, it's a laborious process. As they mentioned, 174 agencies across the entire nation are accredited. So you, you definitely are in the top 1% of all those agencies. So now, on behalf of the North Carolina Recreation and Park Association, the National Recreation and Park Association, and the Commission for Accreditation of Park and Recreation Agencies, it is our honor to present this recognition to Durham Parks and Recreation for being in the top 1% of park and recreation agencies in the nation through your achievement of accreditation. Congratulations.
Congratulations, sir. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you for the opportunity for Michelle and I to recognize the Parks, Recreation, and Cultural Resources Department this, this evening for a job well done. Thank you. Thank you. Want a picture? Come on, Tom. That's your wife. You're taking a picture of her. <laughs> Come on, everybody. Gene, you got to get in front. Come on, Michelle. Charlie? I'm here. Can we see Joy? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. I want to thank uh, Keith and Michelle. Michelle has always been a wonderful partner for Durham, and we really appreciate uh, the, the work of the state association that we're a member of, and you all have been a great partner. We really appreciate it. So thank you, everybody. Thank you, and, and the council members. Thank you for your support of Parks and Recreation here in Durham. They're doing a fantastic job, and your support is very important and appreciated. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. All right. Uh, that was a fun item, and now we've got another fun item. Uh, I will tell you, uh, this, is, this is a special item for me. I got a call from, or an email uh, from Mr. Bill Schaefer. Mr. Schaefer is in the audience. Would you raise your hand? Uh, Mr. Schaefer wrote me a couple of months ago and said, did I know that we had in Durham the national women's chess champion who was about to compete for the international chess championship, which I did not know, but which I was thrilled to find out. We often honor athletic champions in this chamber, but I don't know that we've ever honored a chess champion. Uh, Mr. Schaefer, it, one of the things I want to say about it, it, it is a, uh, Mr. Schaefer is his neighbor to our chess champion, who I'll introduce in a moment. I just want to say, first of all, what a great act of neighborliness uh, that, that he would reach out. He suggested that I call our champion before she left for the international championship. So I did that, which was a lot of fun, having never spoken to a chess champion before, uh, and wished her Godspeed in her endeavors. Uh, but I just want to, and, 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 and so at that point, I knew that we needed to uh, have... Sabina Forsor, uh, our U.S. national chess champion, down here to Durham City Hall uh, to receive this proclamation. So, Sabina, I'm going to ask you uh, and all of your friends that you've brought with you to please come forward uh, as we make this proclamation. Come on up. Honoring the contributions of Sabina Francesca, Francesca? Foisor. Whereas in November 2018, Sabina Francesca Foisor brought international acclaim and glory to herself, her country, and the Durham community with her competition for the title of Women's World Champion of Chess in Kanti Mansiysk, Russia. And whereas Sabina Foisor was born in Timisoara, Romania, immigrated to the United States of America in 2008 and settled in Durham in 2017, drawn by the cult cultural diversity and welcoming attitude of the city. And whereas she achieved the rare and prestigious title of Women, of Woman Grandmaster of Chess in 2007 at the age of 18, based on beating elite players in international competitions. And whereas Sabina's bravery, determination, and consummate skill to dramatically win the 2017 U.S. Women's Championship with a spectacular queen sacrifice in the final round, while at the same time grieving the loss of her mother before the tournament began, is an encouragement and example for all who face personal loss and grief. And whereas Sabina's success in a traditionally male-dominated sport and her passion for encouraging females and youths to believe in their ability to compete and grow in the intellectually demanding and rewarding discipline of chess has enriched the lives of many. And whereas Sabina has volunteered her time and personally invested in the lives of youth by giving inspirational talks and lessons, and by seeking to instill a love for chess which will reap lifelong benefits of logical thinking, discipline, and respect for others. And whereas the Durham community is proud to have among our residents this national champion and international championship contender at the highest levels of chess competition, 
Now, therefore, I, Stephen M. Shul, Mayor of the City of Durham, North Carolina, do hereby proclaim January 7th, 2019, as Sabina Francesca Foysor Day in the city of Durham, and hereby urge all residents to take note of this occasion and celebrate it in honor of this esteemed Durham champion. Witness my hand in the corporate seal of the city of Durham, North Carolina, the 7th day of January, 2019. Sabina, I'm uh, going to present this proclamation to you and ask you if you would come forward to say a few words to us. I'm usually very nervous, so <laughs> I, I wrote something. Um, uh, good ev evening, everyone. Um, thank you very much for having me here today. Um, thank you, uh, Mayor Scholl, for this um, invitation and um, city council members and uh, guests. Um, I am uh, very thankful for my family uh, and my friends because without them uh, I wouldn't be here today. I'm also thankful for um, my fiance who is here tonight, <laughs> can celebrate this with me. Thank you Bill as well and uh, your wife uh, Leslie for being for, here for me tonight and um, Carol. Um, I would uh, it is really, uh, I'm really humbled and honored for um, this, uh, for, for receiving this award. Uh, Jess has been uh, my everyday companion since I was four years old. Uh, my parents taught me and throughout the years I learned that Jess can teach us a lot, can help us have a better memory, have a better um, critical thinking, strategic planning. Uh, but also have uh, patience and also taught me never to give up. I've had a lot of struggles uh, in my chess career, so it's been um, uh, tough to, to overcome these diff difficulties, but I learned to never give up. It's the type of game that teaches you to, to teaches you something even when you're actually losing the game. Um, without chess, I probably wouldn't be standing here tonight, so uh, I'm thankful. <laughs> to chess as well for that. Um, it also uh, gave me the, the chance to, to study in the United States and uh, I'm very grateful for that and uh, for um, having chosen Durham to be my, my home now. I've moved here in 2017 and uh, both my fiance and I decided to actually buy a place to stay here for good, so. Uh, uh, one last thing that I want to say is that um, this award is a new motivation for me to continue using chess uh, as a way to return to the community. Um, and I have some projects in mind that I hope I'll be able to do, like um, thinking about collegiate chess. Uh, actually, uh, this year, at the end of this year, uh, the Pan American Team Championships, which is uh, an event um, for universities is going to be coming in North Carolina in Charlotte. So I hope I'll be able to, uh, <laughs> to find some, um, to, to, to talk to universities from around us to, uh, if they're interested in competing. But most importantly, I want to um, use chess as a means to empower females, girls, to, um, to, um, succeed in a male-dominated sport. Thank you very much. Okay, come on up, take another picture. Please do. Thank you. Congratulations. It's great to have a national champion in the house. Absolutely. And next, I'm going to ask my, uh, my colleague, Mark Anthony Middleton, to come forward um, for the <coughs> excuse me, proclamation. 
celebrating and honoring the life of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And I'm going to ask uh, Dr. Uh, DeWarren Langley also if he would come forward to receive the proclamation. Good evening, everyone, and Happy New Year. Uh, my thanks to the mayor. I think on it. How come you did that? You had to do it. <laughs> DeWarren would like you to step up now. My thanks to his honor, the mayor, uh, for allowing us to participate in what you, what you can see is one of the coolest prerogatives of his office, and that's reading uh, these proclamations and resolutions. Uh, my suspicion is that the fact is not lost on the mayor uh, of the place that Dr. King holds in my personal pantheon of American heroes uh, and leaders, so I thank him for this, this wonderful opportunity. Honoring the life of the late Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., Whereas a champion of justice, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. devoted his life to strengthening the content of the American character and fought unrelentingly for the civil rights of all Americans and taught us through nonviolence that courage displaces fear. Love transforms hate. Acceptance dissipates prejudice and mutual regard cancels enmity. And whereas Dr. King helped to organize efforts, plan events, and lead marches to advance the rights of African Americans to vote, for desegregation, for recognition and respect for labor rights, and to ensure other basic civil rights. And whereas Dr. King was one of the leaders, one of the leaders of the successful Montgomery bus boycott in 1955, and helped found and served as the first president of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference in 1957 to coordinate and support nonviolent direct action as a method of desegregating bus systems across the South. And whereas between 1960 and 1964, Dr. King made addresses in Durham at White Rock Baptist Church, the Durham Business and Professional Chain, Hillside High School, Jack Tar Hotel to the Southern Political Science Association, North Carolina College now, North Carolina Central University, and Duke University urging civil disobedience and nonviolent protest to end racial segregation and discrimination. And whereas Dr. King helped organize the 1963 nonviolent protest in Birmingham, Alabama, that drew national attention to the struggle for civil rights and the hateful and brutal responses of the local law enforcement, and helped organize the March on Washington during which he delivered his eloquent and moving I Have a Dream speech. And whereas Dr. King helped to organize the monumentally inspiring Selma to Montgomery marches in 1965 to advocate for passage of the Voting Rights Act to guarantee African American citizens the right to vote. And whereas Dr. King was supporting the garbage workers in Memphis, Tennessee, and planning the Poor People's Campaign to promote economic justice when he was assassinated in Memphis in 1968. Now, therefore I, Stephen M. Shule, mayor of the city of Durham, North Carolina, do hereby honor the life and work of the late Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and his commitment to a free and just world, hereby urge all residents of the city of Durham to join us in reflecting on and advancing Dr. King's life and fulfilling his dream. Witness my hand, in the corporate seal of the city of Durham, North Carolina, this seventh day of January, 2019. Thank you, Councilman Middleton. On behalf of the Durham MLK Steering Committee, we would like to thank the city council members and the mayor for this proclamation, but also to invite members of, of the community out to the different events that we'll be having throughout the month of January in recognition and honor of Dr. King. So I wanted to share with you all the list of events that we have for um, 2019. On next Monday, January the 14th, we will receive a proclamation from the Board of County Commissioners celebrating and honoring the life of Dr. King. On Saturday, January the 14th at 12 noon in CCB Plaza, we will have a reef land ceremony in honor of the life of Dr. King. On Monday, January the 21st, we will have, in partnership with the Triangle Martin Luther King Committee, the 39th Annual Martin Luther King Triangle Interfaith Prayer Breakfast, 
with keynote speaker David Crabtree. That will begin at 7 a.m. Breakfast will be from 6 a.m. to 8 a.m. We will have the Unity March and Rally beginning at North Carolina Mutual Life Insurance Company proceeding to First Presbyterian beginning at 10.30 a.m. We will have two um, day of service events. One will be in partnership with the Book Harvest. We're asking members of the community that attend the March and Rally as well as our annual religious service to please bring new books for donation to children. We will also have a day of service event with Jubilee Home from 2.30 to 5 at 404 East Umstead Street. And then we will conclude our events with our annual religious celebration with keynote speaker, Reverend Dr. William C. Turner. And at that event, we will also award academic scholarships as well as the 2009 Keeper of the Dream Award, which goes to one individual and one member of our community. So if your schedule permits, we will welcome members of the community as well as council to please be present and attend. Thank you so very much. Thank you very much, Councilmember Middleton. And uh, I'm going to ask uh, DeWarren to stay here, and I'm going to ask uh, my City Council colleague, Javiera Caballero, if she would come and do the honors now uh, for the National Mentoring Month uh, proclamation. There are a number of organizations that are present from the Long Ball Program, as well as Emily K. Center, TMA Leadership Academy, as well as Project Proud. Please come up and join me at the podium. Good evening. <clears throat> Whereas in 2002, the Harvard School of Public Health and Mentor, the National Mentoring Partnership created National Mentoring Month, and whereas the goals of National Mentoring Month are to raise awareness of mentoring, recruit individuals to mentor, encourage organizations to engage and integrate quality mentoring into their efforts and motivate youth to excel, and whereas a mentor is a caring person that provides a consistent presence and devotes time to a young person, to help that young person discover personal strength to persevere, achieve their potential, and thrive through a structured and trusting relationship. And whereas nobody succeeds on their own, mentors provide young people the chance they need to move forward and set their sights even higher, whether helping young people study for a test, learn a new skill, or lift their heads up after a setback. And whereas quality mentoring encourages and empowers young people to make positive choices, promote self-esteem, and character development, support academic achievement, and introduce young people to new ideas, and whereas mentoring programs have shown to be effective in combating school violence, discipline problems, substance abuse, incarceration, and truancy, and whereas development experts agree that youth mentoring is critical to the social, emotional, and cognitive development of our young people and helps them navigate the path to adulthood more successfully, and whereas research shows that young people who are at risk for not completing high school but who had a mentor were 52% more likely than their peers to skip a day of school, 55% more likely to be enrolled in college, 81% more likely to report participating regularly in extracurricular activities, 46% less likely than their peers to start using drugs, 130% more than twice as likely to say they held a leadership position in a club or sports team, and 78% more likely to volunteer regularly in their communities, Whereas mentors help young people set career goals and use their personal contacts to help young people meet industry professionals and find jobs to improve professional outcomes for young people. Now, therefore, I, Stephen M. Shule, Mayor of the City of Durham, North Carolina, do hereby proclaim January 19th as National Mentoring Month in the City of Durham and hereby call upon all public officials, business, and community leaders and educators and encourage all citizens to observe this month with appropriate ceremonies, activities, and programs in order to recognize the men and women who serve as staff and volunteers at quality mentoring programs and help our young people find inner strength and reach their full potential. Acknowledge that mentoring is beneficial because it facilitates healthy identity development, encourages educational achievement, reduces juvenile delinquency, expands career readiness, improves life outcomes, and strengthens communities. 
promote the creation, expansion, sustainability, and funding of quality mentoring programs across Durham to equip young people with the tools needed to lead healthy and productive lives. And support initiatives to close the mentoring gap and promote critical mentoring to support boys of color with mentors who perceive and understand social, political, and economic oppression and to take action against oppressive elements of society. Witness my hand in the corporate seal of the city of Durham, North Carolina, this seventh day of January, 2019. Thank you all so very much for this proclamation. Uh, recognizing January is National Mentoring Month. As you all know, as a long-term member of this community, I've always supported mentoring as a means for helping to advance the lives of our youth this evening. We have a few uh, organizations that work with young people in this community, and I wanted to provide them with an opportunity to share what they do and how it advances the work for young people in this community. Briefly. Hello everyone, my name is Emmanuel Beatty. I serve as the Director of Community Affairs for Thomas Mentor and Leadership Academy. Um, we service about 30 boys right now um, between the ages of four, nine to 14. Um, we service young men who come from single mother household um, or live with a grandparent or foster parent. So those are the demographic of kids that we're working with on a daily basis, um, ensuring that they're making the right decisions um, and staying away from at-risk behavior. So Thomas Mentor and Leadership Academy, um, you can find us at TMLA, tmlacademy.org or TMLA, TML Academy on Facebook as well. Good evening, my name is Dwayne Campbell and I represent um, Emily K Center. Uh, we are a college hub in Durham, North Carolina. Our job is to ensure that there are more students matriculating into college. There are far too many of our students who miss the opportunity to be enrolled in four year, quality four year um, education programs. And we've recognized that Durham's youth has a lot of, um, have a lot of potential. And we want to ensure that these students recognize that there are so many opportunities um, beyond just the MLK Center, and but there are other opportunities that will come their way if they get um, post-secondary education access. And we have four major programs and our main programs are for um, elementary to middle school students and then we have a second program that's a closed program for secondary school students. Um, we have another program for students who are on college campuses who need the support to transition um, to colleges. And uh, the program that I had is called Game Plan College, and we go across Durham, North Carolina, um, ensuring that all high school students know that they are able to get to college and we provide them with the necessary support. Um, and we ask that you support Emily K Center's work. Um, thank you. Good evening, I'm Pat. I run the Long Ball Inner City Baseball Program, and we push education. There are 167 kids in our program, and I'm glad to announce that this year, in July, the weekend of July 18th, we will be bringing 500 athletes to Durham to compete in the regionals, which is a major league program. And the first time major league will host a tournament in North Carolina, and Durham was selected. Um, we have 100% um, of our kids there in school. We have no dropouts. We have, um, we're like the parents, we're like family to the kids. We push education and make sure that they understand that they can go to college, and quite a few of our kids go to college. I had 23 young men on the A honor roll. So I'm so proud, and I want Durham to come out and please support this program when the regionals come in town. Our opening day will be May 28th at the Durham Bulls Athletic Park, the old Durham Bulls Park. Admission is always free. Thank you, Thank you everybody. We appreciate it. All right, we had a lot of good ceremonial items tonight, more than usual, but uh, fortunately, we don't have a very long agenda, so that's a good thing. Um, 
We'll now proceed to announcements by members of the council. Any council members have an announcement? Hearing none, uh, I'll ask, I'm sorry. Um, I just wanted to take a moment to um, just congratulate all of our recent investigators, um, uh, Supreme Court Justice Anita Earls, and um, also, um, goodness, I don't realize, Clayton Jones, Mr. Dave Attorney, Hall, yes, Judges, Judges, <coughs> and um, Josephine Davis, as well as General Tom Assembly, mm -hmm. yes, and all of those in the General Assembly, and um, yeah, so it's been a lot of uh, movement. I'm excited about the year ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Any other announcements? If not, um, Mr. Manager, any priority items? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of uh, City Council. Uh, good evening, and on behalf of the City Manager's Office and all of our employees, we too want to extend everyone a happy new year and say that we are looking forward to a great 2019. This evening, we do have one priority item, which is agenda item number nine, uniformed unarmed security guard services for the city's parking facilities. This item needs to be referred back to the administration. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Manager. Uh, I will now uh, accept an item, um, accept a motion on the manager's priority item. Move. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we uh, refer item nine back to the manager's office. <coughs> Madam Clerk, will you please open the vote? Please close the vote. And the motion passes 7-0. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, Mr. Attorney, do you have any priority items? Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council. I have no priority items for your agenda, but would like a moment of uh, personal privilege if I could. Yes, sir. Um, uh, for members of uh, the staff that are here and, and the public, uh, we held a special meeting uh, this evening at 6 o'clock, uh, in which we uh, adjourned into a closed session to discuss a personnel matter. Um, I was the subject of that personnel matter, and I'd like to read uh, into the record a document that I submitted to the City Council during that meeting. Um, this is a letter um, addressed to Mayor Steve Shule, copy to Council Members, uh, City Manager Bonfield, and City Clerk Diana Schreiber. <coughs> Dear Steve, pursuant to Section 13 of my employment contract with the City of Durham, Please accept this memorandum as my notice of intent to resign my position as City Attorney of Durham, effective March 8, 2019. Serving you, this and past City Councils and Administrations, as well as all of the past and current residents of the City of Durham over the last 21 years has been the honor of a lifetime. On behalf of my wife, Rayanne, and my children, Griffin and Chloe, we cannot express enough our appreciation for all the opportunities afforded to us in this amazing community. I will have much more to say about my tenure with this organization and community as we get closer to that departure date. Sincerely, Patrick W. Baker, City Attorney. Uh, a couple of things that I didn't uh, include in that note uh, is that um, uh, for members of the public and staff, I have accepted uh, the position as the Charlotte City Attorney uh, and will be starting uh, my work there uh, on or about March the 11th. Um, and I uh, will be using the, the next 60 days uh, to ensure an absolutely seamless transition uh, with this organization as we move forward. Uh, I think I've got a great staff of attorneys uh, and look forward to uh, making this transition as smoothly as possible for you. Thank you. Patrick, that's not the kind of thing one claps for. Mm -mm. <laughs> um, let's just, I, I just want to say, and we'll have many other opportunities to say this, uh, on behalf of my colleagues and on behalf of our city staff and on behalf of our community, uh, that while we recognize this as a tremendous loss for Durham, we also want to wish you Godspeed in your new job. And we know that uh, you'll do the same fantastic work that you have done here in Durham that you'll be doing in Charlotte. But we will miss you terribly, uh, not only personally as, as friends, but also for the incredible uh, professional work that you have done in Durham. I, I want to say to members of the public, you may not know this, Patrick may be one of the only people in the country who's ever been both a city manager and a city attorney of a city. You served us for 21 years uh, with incredible distinction. Um, when you told us, Patrick, uh, told me recently and council members, uh, and then we had, a, as you said, a closed session just earlier today, uh, that you were leaving, um, we all felt the same thing, which was 
of happiness for you at the same time as uh, a, a sense of gratitude uh, for your great work here and a sense of loss uh, because we really are uh, going to miss you in every way. Uh, so just wanted to say that, wanted to tell you that we really are rooting for you in your new job and, and, uh, and when I see the mayor of Charlotte, uh, that will be the end of our friendship. <laughs> it's on, man. Uh, <laughs> so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask now if any of my colleagues have any brief remarks they would like to offer. Uh, we will have more chances, of course, to, um, to uh, celebrate you uh, before, the, uh, before the next two months are over. But I uh, do want to say we also should add that we appreciate that you're giving us this two-month trans transition and um, the council will be working and has already started thinking about the interim, uh, the interim uh, city attorney to be uh, covering uh, your work. Uh, but we appreciate very much the responsible way in which you're doing this leave taking and we'll just miss you a lot, Patrick, the whole city. Thank you. Colleagues, anyone? I'm going to be nice right now. <laughs> I think you said it all, Mr. Mayor. All right. Well, we'll have other opportunities to do so. And uh, Patrick, uh, maybe now we should offer you a round of applause. after this is going to be kind of melodramatic mm. or anticlimactic, I think the word is, not melodramatic, anticlimactic. <laughs> Thank you, Patrick. Um, Madam Clerk, any priority items? Could we make it an item that he stays? <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Good I have idea. no items. Thank you, Madam Clerk. We'll now move to the consent agenda. The consent agenda can be adopted by the council with a single vote. Uh, the uh, members of the public or members of the council can pull items from the consent agenda, which will then be taken up at the end of the meeting. I'm going to read the uh, consent agenda items. Item one, approval of city council minutes. Item two, Durham Historic Preservation Commission appointment. Item three, Bloomberg Mayor's Challenge Grant. This item has been pulled by Ms. Victoria Peterson. Item four, elected officials travel authorization and expense reimbursement policy. Item six, expansion of the Environmental Affairs Board. Item seven, developer agreement and option contract for phase two of the Willow Street Apartments to Self-Help Ventures Fund and DHIC, Inc. Item, item eight, Habitat for Humanity of Durham Affordable Housing Project. This was also pulled by Ms. Peterson. Item nine, uniform unarmed security guard services for the city's parking facilities has been referred back to the administration. Item 10, agreement with the Durham Chapel Hill Carver Metropolitan Planning Organization, North Carolina Department of Transportation for the Congestion Management Process, Web Application and Grant Project Ordinance. Item 11, agreement with the Durham Chapel Hill Carver Metropolitan Planning Organization, the North Carolina Department of Transportation for the update of the web-based transportation improvement program of TIP and Grant Project Ordinance. Item 12, bid report November 2018. Item 13, hazard mitigation grant program, HMGP 4167-0014-R Grant Project Ordinance. Item 14, Hazard Mitigation Grant Project Management, HG, HMGP 4167, Amendment Number 1. I will now ask for uh, a motion to approve the consent agenda with the exception of Items 3, 8, and 9. So moved, Mr. Mayor. It's been moved and seconded that we approve the consent agenda. Madam Clerk, will you please open the vote? Please close the vote. Motion passes 7-0. Thank you very much. We'll now move to item three. Uh, Ms. Peterson, you have three minutes. Yes, I'm Mrs. Peterson, Victoria Peterson. First thing, that was a little shock to my spirit to hear about our attorney, Mr. Attorney Baker leaving. He knows I'm going to miss him. Uh, sorry to see you go. I, I hate to see you go. Do I need to make a phone call to the Charlotte mayor? But anyway, we'll talk about that later. I'm very concerned about this 
amount of dollars, a million dollars, to help bring about some form or way of transportation. I don't see anything, and I don't, I'm hoping maybe the person will be speaking on this. I apologize, the light bothers my eyes. I don't see anything, and I tried to read a little bit about it. I don't see a job program connected to this million dollars that's going to be coming into this community to bring about new ways of encouraging people not to drive their vehicles. There should be a component here to make sure that our young men and women are going to be employed. I was at a county commissioner meeting today. $20 million is being appropriate for a project out in the county. Not one, not one dime is being set aside so far. These folks have been working on this project for four years. Nothing is set aside for job development and to make sure that our local men and women are getting jobs in this community, and I'm going to tell you why. We had another three people that were murdered on New Year's Eve in this community. Another person shot. I'm sorry, not New Year's Eve, New Year's Day. Two young folks were shot already. In the last five days, what is going on in this community? These young people need job training. If they're not going to go to college, they cannot afford to go to community college or vocational. Some of these dollars should be used for training. Whoever's going to bring in this program, I want to see their office cited over at the TGJ, the Recreation Center, that sits vacant all day over there until around 3 o'clock over near the public housing. in Maduka Terrace. You have a rec center that sits there every day. Finally, somebody has put some kind of a center in there for the kids, but that only goes on there for a few hours. There's not a GED program. Thank you, Ms. Peterson. There. Thank you, Ms. Peterson. We appreciate it. But Mr. Mayor, uh, Ms. please Peterson. let me finish saying my thoughts, Ms. Peterson. And, I'll, and I'll sit down. Ms. Peterson, you finish in one sentence. Excuse me? One sentence. Talk about the murders just took place in this community this week, okay. and what are we going to do about Thank it? Thank you, Ms. Peterson. And how can these dollars bring about some training Ms. to get these kids off these streets from shooting and killing one another? Ms. Peterson, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just to say for members of the public, just so people who are watching understand, this is a grant application that we received, a uh, million dollars from the Bloomberg Foundation uh, in order to uh, to uh, follow up on some great work that we did, uh, that our city staff did, trying to get people coming downtown in ways that are other than in their cars, so that we can change the way in which people travel in Durham, that we can uh, encourage people to bike and ride the public transit and walk into downtown instead of driving their cars. It's a way to fight climate change. It's a way to improve our quality of life. It's very important. Um, we do have, of course, many community centers, many, many community centers throughout the city that are open for our young people. We have uh, free programming for our teenagers at, at uh, many of our, 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 uh, our community centers every single afternoon and are serving hundreds of them, and we'll continue to do so. I'll now accept a motion on item three. So moved. So moved. Second. Been moved and second that we approve item three. Madam Clerk, will you please open the vote? Please close the vote. <laughs> <clears throat> Motion passes 7-0. Thank you very much. We'll now move to item 8. Ms. Peterson, you again have three minutes. Here is another program that I do not see anything dealing with economic development. And Mr. Mayor, I'm sorry. When Ms. Weeks was shot the other week by a group of young black men, they still have not been taken off the street. I have a friend, a neighbor, at least a sister in my church, daughters having some issues with a young man that has threatened to murder them. He's damaged two cars. We see a $497,000, and I think Mr. Johnson is handling this. 
25 new homes are going to be built in this community. And that's awesome. And that's great. Who's going to be doing the work? Do we have a construction program being done and housed in Holton School? I know a few years ago we talked about that. I don't know if that program has ever got up and started running. I see the city manager shaking his head. Maybe we are doing something. We need to make sure that if we're going to be giving tax dollars out for these various programs, then we need to make sure that our young people, African-American boys and girls, are being hired and trained to get these jobs. And as far as I know, the only program that was going on over at the Holton School a few years ago was a barber program to cut hair. There's nothing wrong with that. But we need to have more than that going on. And TG Jakes can be used for a GED program. It can also be used for a construction program. There's nothing going on on my side of town. I live in walking distance to McDougal Terrace. We had killings and shootings going on over in that, uh, close to that community. And I don't want to just bring up McDougal Terrace. I can bring up North Carolina Central University. They've got issues going over there on that campus. The crime is running rapid in the 4th District. The 4th District. Do you know where the police station, I mean, not the, where that uh, satellite station is for the 4th District? It's way out there on, um, on Alexander Drive. Do you know how long it takes to get out there to come to my house when I have to call the police of all the gun shooting that went on on, the, on New Year's Eve? Shooting and shooting and shooting? It was unbelievable. I want you to do something. Somebody texted me the other day and said, did you know that the majority of the city council members now are persons of color? I want to know what program are my brothers and sisters putting together on this city council to address the murdering, the murdering crime that is going on in our community. It's not going on over there. In Thank you, Ms. Peterson. Road. Thank you, Ms. Peterson. And some, I know you want to shut me down, Mr. Mayor. Ms. Peterson, I don't want to shut do you down. Your three this. minutes are up. Oh, I, we need to do something about the murdering going on in this community, particularly with black folks being killed and shot. Two young folks were Ms. shot. Ms. Peterson, Please you say know something the rules. And do something. You have to obey the rules in this, in this chamber just like everybody else. You had your three minutes. Thank you. Let me just say, nobody cares about what's going on in terms of violence in this community more than the people on this council. Uh, we think about it every day and we work hard on it. There are many ways in which we can fight the violence that goes on in our community. We have a superb police department under terrific leadership. We, have, we hire the best, we train them well, and we support them well. And we'll continue to do that. And we also work hard to fight the root, the root causes of violence. And one of the ways that we work to fight the root causes of violence is by trying to work on affordable housing to make people who live in communities have a decent, safe place to live. That's what this item is, Ms. Peterson. This is around $500,000 to support Habitat for Humanity for low-income people, predominantly people of color, to become first-time homebuyers in an affordable way. It's a good thing. All right, I'll accept the motion on item eight. So moved. Second. Second. Mr. Mayor, before you move forward. Ms. Councilman, I just want to make sure that we're clar clarifying. I think she means T. E. Grady, not T. D. Jakes. T. E. Grady. T. A. Grady. And I just want to acknowledge that I, I recognize what you're saying as far as programming, and I would like to make sure that someone from staff does reach out to Ms. Peterson because I don't think she knows uh, about a lot of the work that we are doing, and I would like to make sure that she's well aware by department. Thank you. Thank you. I'll accept a motion on item eight. So moved. Second. Madam Clerk, please open the vote. Please close the vote. Motion passes 7-0. Thank you. I don't believe there's any more uh, business to come before this body. And other than saying, again, Godspeed to our city attorney, uh, I will declare this meeting adjourned. 7-53. Tori, I think what you...